Now, obviously, like, tomorrow like, night's a big night in NFL where everybody's expecting the, the draft, and you know, there's a lot of events that go on and parties and everything else, and it's a it's a big event yeah. now. It's, before, maybe it wasn't such, but now it is. Who do you anticipate? Did the coaches ever talk to the players? Did they talk to you guys and say, this is the direction we're thinking about going in the draft, maybe to get your input? Or do they, you I have no idea what the team is going to do, or are you even not at liberty to say? <laughs> well, I, number one, I have no idea what they're going to do. But, you know, I, I have been joking around with the coaches and, and our, our GM, Brian Zanders, this week, joking around with them a little bit and saying, we want Tebow. We want Tebow. So I've just been chatting that, just messing around with them. But uh, I have no idea what they're going to do. You know, I, I, think, um, I think they do a great job evaluating players and evaluating the guys they want to play in their system. And uh, as long as we get some guys that are going to help us next year, uh, just like we did last year, and some guys that are talented, have, have a lot of potential, um, you never know, you know, you never know what really the guy's going to be until he gets here and until the season begins and, and, and you see what kind of product you have on the field anyway. Well, let's talk about one of your Georgia boys who came in last year as a rookie. Uh, no, Sean Marino from Georgia, went to Middletown High School. Uh, no, he's from Jer Jersey, Jersey, Jersey boys, Jersey boys. I'm sorry. Went to, went Georgia. to University Jersey. of Georgia, but he's a Jersey boy. Uh, what impact do you think he's, he's from? Right, he's from like 15 minutes where I'm from. We're from the same county. Like, we're real close. Okay. So you have an affinity then, a connection with your Jersey boy. Tell me about his second year heading in. What do you think and what do you expect from him? And I know there's going to be some changes made to the offensive line. I think, you know, obviously Shanahan, he went zone blocking. He liked lighter, faster guys. And we all know McDaniels likes a little bit more smash mouth style, little pulling guards from traps taking DT's head on. So the line will probably get a little beefier this offseason, we would imagine, and and uh, probably do some things there. What do you expect from Noshawn heading into his second year in the NFL? I mean, I, I, I expect him to grow, you know, and uh, that's all we can ask of him is him to continue growing as, as a football player. He's super talented, you know, and uh, he's super explosive. Um He's, he's, he's fast. He, you know, he's a real good running back. He has great vision. But you know, one of the things I think Noshan, um, especially early on last year, he was too fast. Like he had to learn to slow down a little bit, um, and, and kind of wait for the holes and to develop a little bit. And I, I think um, he having a guy like Karel Buckhalter to learn under, um, to kind of mentor him and bring him along. That's a patient running back. That's been in the league a long time, a veteran, real good running back, you know, real good out of the backfield catching the catching the ball. I think that that just helps Noshan in, in his growth. And uh, you know, obviously holding on to the ball, you know, uh, I'm not sure exactly how many fumbles he had last year or how many we lost, but I, I remember a, a few, you know. So um, just little things like that, and him growing as a running back, him growing as a pro. Uh, he's been doing a great job this off season, and uh, that's all we can ask him. Yeah, one of the great things about Marino, if you look at him through his years in high school, he got better. In college, he got better. So I think every level he gets to, he seems to improve every year. He seems to, the numbers get better. Everything seems to get better. So I am very excited to see what, what he has to bring to the table. And, you know, I would love to see him just, just go off next year. Obviously, being a Broncos fan, I want to see the best things happen. I think the running game is going to be – you know, and this is my opinion, but I think the running game is going to be the focal point of the offense, you know, heading into uh, 2010. I wouldn't be surprised if they pick up another running back in the draft and really just come at it with a two- or three-headed attack. What do you think about that? I think I think the one thing about Noshan that a lot of people don't realize is he, he's a real humble guy, and he, he's a guy that's willing to learn. You know, some guys come in the NFL, and they think they know it all, but he's not one of those type of guys. He, he I think he realizes that there's a learning curve, and, um, he, he's, like I said, he's learning from a great guy, Karel Buckhalter. So um, as far as our offense goes, you never know what, what Josh McDaniels is going to do week in and week out. Um, he, he, tell, he told us last year when he first got here, we're going to do whatever it takes each week to win, whether it's running the ball 30 times or passing the ball 30 times. You know, if, if that's what that week requires, we'll adjust the game plan accordingly. And, and, and do what we need to do to win the ball game. He doesn't care about stats or who's getting the ball. Who's, he doesn't care about anything. He cares about Ws, and that's what I like about him. All 
All right, my final question, it actually comes from a friend of yours, Cato June. He asked me to ask you, have you ever beaten Michigan when you were in Minnesota? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> you know what, man? Cato would say that. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> we, we were up on Michigan. 21 points going into the fourth quarter. It's it was like one of the dev most devastating games of my life. And we ended up losing. They cheated. You know, typical Michigan stuff, you know. <laughs> so, whatever. They they got over, you know. Actually, we won, we, we won the jug the year after I left. So, it's not like we haven't ever beaten Michigan. I just didn't do it. We, but in my defense, I think I only played Michigan a couple years. They were off the schedule, you know, because the Big Ten, we got – we got a. Uh, we got eleven teams, so like two teams go off and on the schedule every every couple of years. So Michigan was off the schedule for a couple of years. I think that was Cato's years. I I don't think I ever lost to his punk ass. <laughs> he said he said you may say something like that. So he asked in a rhetorical question, "Did you ever hold up the jug?" <laughs> I got a picture with the jug. I had to, I showed him too. I went back and took a picture with the jug just for Cato. Right. So he. he <laughs> we'll have to show him this interview and let him know what's up. Sounds He'll good. see it. He'll see it. I'll, I'll retweet him. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, I'm Steve-O at SkinnyPost.com. This is Daryl Reed of the Denver Broncos. We're very excited to have him here on our website and, and give us some insight about him and his teammates and, and what the Broncos have to look forward to here in the future. Thanks so much, D. Reed, for stopping by and giving us the skinny on football 24-7. We appreciate having you. Hey, I appreciate it, man. You know, anytime, baby. Just holla at me, Steve-O. Sounds good. Be good, big boy. All right. Peace.